Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this afternoon webinar here at Admirals. <clears throat> My name is Theo, and I'm here to introduce you to your host for today. I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, can you guys let me know from where you are in the world, in which country are you located? Because uh, we have people from all over the world. It will be nice to understand where you're coming from. If you don't mind, you can use the chat box below and you can type it. In the meantime, I would like to make sure that you are familiar and you subscribed to the YouTube channel. I'm sending you the link now on the chat. You can click and please make sure you subscribe and you can also like the videos. There are a few things here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe and enable, and enable your notifications, every time we post, we upload uh, a live webinar or a recording webinar like the one you're going to watch today, you can receive notifications so you can um, you can uh, watch it in case you missed it. So here at Trading Spotlight, you can find all of Jens webinars. Okay. And I'm sure that today one is going to be excited because we're going to learn about the growth domestic product and how can we trade it? Yeah. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, yes, to the live trading we do Monday to Friday, please make sure you do so either from the Zoom or directly from here. That's the same. And next one, please follow us uh, on uh, Instagram because here we put on a daily basis content either in terms of stories or in terms of um, posts and uh, many, many reels here is Jens always is preparing you for what you're going to uh, listen and watch on the webinar. Okay, so when many other people, including myself and other people in the here at Admirals, we try to make sure that everything related to trading either in a, a more entertaining way or in in a content so it's going to benefit your uh, trading here is jens again jens everywhere yeah and this is the telegram channel ladies and gents please make sure you use the telegram you follow us here now we enable the uh, message button so you can use it for comments and it's it's brilliant. If you have questions about charts we post or about um, the webinars we host, please make sure you feel free. Any, anyhow, this is in everything we do here. It's to help you become better traders. So uh, please make sure you use them. Uh, Mr. Jens, uh, hello. Sorry, I didn't say hi just when you uh, join. I noticed you, but I just... Hey, hello, uh, Theo. I love to listen to you. <laughs> so you're the guy from from Instagram. Um, I'm, I I I I noticed you there. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, exciting uh, webinar today, right? Uh, I I hope so. So I had uh, lots of fun to prepare um, everything. So I hope people enjoy uh, the webinar as much as I had fun prepare everything around it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and something I forget to mention to our audience, uh, it's the the upcoming uh, uh, season we're going to have on the December 13th, right? So guys, only for, for you, for Admiral clients, we're going to host myself, Jens and Paul, a webinar to talk about what's going on in 22 and uh, what can we expect in 2023. So please that's a, an opportunity for you to participate and then and, and uh, listen and watch three um, very experienced traders investors educators to to do analysis you can have a chance to ask anything you want to ask live and it will be something uh in my opinion you should looking forward right right gents <laughs> I think so. Um, I, I really well remember we did this, I think, last year um, yeah. for the first time. And um, I, I really well remember that there was a guy within this webinar. His name is Paul, and I, he will join us today and again in this yeah. webinar. And he was talking about a very exotic currency, uh, which is called the Russian ruble. <laughs> and he <laughs> called this vertical move higher. Um, so I think that many who listened um, there to us um, probably profited from 
from from his his outlook and will so this time too so um I, I recommend it myself so i really look forward to it and hope to to get some great insights from paul again so, yeah well, fantastic I, i hope to deliver something myself certainly but, you uh, do man you do come <laughs> on you are the guy so you do you do <laughs> oh that's too much that's too much <laughs> So, so um, sh shall I share my screen? Yes, please. Um, yes. Can everyone see my screen right now? I think last time uh, there was some 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 issues, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, that um, when we when we uploaded this on YouTube, that the uh, screen um, wasn't visible. So, but I see a Y here. So this is then a yes. And now the chat box is also. Let me just type in here. So hello. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the German hello traders. No, it's the hello traders with an E. So um, yeah, um, as I already said, um, I, I really look forward here to today's uh, webinar. I hope that uh, you will enjoy it and, and to get something out of this. Um, in fact, we, we don't want to um, look solely on the GDP. We certainly want to use it, but um, I want to make sure, I hope that I can make sure um, that you understand why this is a crucial number to understand and keep an eye on. Um, and also not just um, why it's crucial to, to, to look at it in a, in a whole perspective, but in addition to that, also I get an idea on um, where to find more information, um, especially when looking at the GDP data itself. So I mean, everyone can uh, look up information around the GDP, um, him, him, herself, themselves. Um, when it comes here to um, 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 understanding what is this number and how is it calculated, but us as traders, um, we are we are very interested in how to use it for our trading, and not just um, how to use it in our trading, but also in addition to that, how to make something um, 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 out of this in terms of a trade hypothesis. What's the market expectation? Um, what did the market we plan to trade uh, based um, um, on this news release um, did in the recent past? And then why, where, how will the market react to the announcement if it's um, surprises on the upside, respectively on the downside? What does it mean for the outlook, let's say of a central bank and so on and so forth. And this is exactly what we um, want to cover here today. Before I start, um, first of all, please make sure that you read the risk disclaimer carefully, that you understand that there's risks involved when trading the markets, especially when trading the markets with leveraged products. Um, as we do here, if I formulate any kind of trade hypothesis, um, if we make a trade, which is unlikely today due to the fact that it's Black Friday, uh, that the market is very volatile, even though we have some volatility, in fact, in, that, in the Tesla stock. I don't really know what's going on there, but seeing 2 million shares being traded already in the pre-market, um, now uh, with, with uh, uh, shortened trading hours, um, it's kind of surprising, let's say, but I doubt that we will make a trade here or that, the, that, that I formulate a clear game plan or But if I do, for whatever reason, please make sure that you understand that um, there's risks involved. First of all, I can't guarantee that the trade will play out. If you take the trade yourself, please understand that all risks involved are your risks then. So please um, um, calculate your position size adequately. Um, please make sure that you understand that if your trade loses, that your responsibility um, is 100% in this case. You can also take all of the profits for sure. But first of all, we have to take trading from a potential losing perspective. Everything I present to you here is for educational purposes only, research, educational purposes only. And if again, any trades or hypothesis or plans, setups are formulated, um, that again, it's only 100% educational purposes we are covering here. Um, I don't think that I need to introduce Admirals um, any further. I think uh, Theo made already a great job. Um, um, so not, nothing, nothing to add from my end here. But what we want to do is we want to dig deep into um, the topic from today and give a little insights into the economic background. Um, even though we want to go through this here now by step by step, um, I also uh, will, will show and share some um, um, numbers which you can then use, not just numbers, but also pictures or graphics, which you can then use to draw your own conclusions. Um, so this is very interesting here to, to get an overview of um, how an economy, uh, economy is um, um, behaving. So there is a an, 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 an recovery of respectively, there's sometimes a boom phase, and then there's a rollover, we dip over, um, we see a recession, which we potentially right now are in, 
Um, and then we see another bounce. We recover from the recession and take on again. So it's kind of a, let's say, um, um, sinus interval. I'm not really sure if this is the, um, 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 uh, the, the wording which is used in the English um, world, but um, you probably know uh, from trigonometrics, uh, tri tri trigonometry, it's the English word, I think. Um, so in German, it's trigonometry, and it's like a sinus curve. So it's like a, um, um, a, a sinus curve xenos curve or whatever it might be so that there's ups and downs and and that is cyclical so this is um what all this is about so there's some um, um, phases of, of economic growth and then there's some um, uh, signs or economic acceleration and then economic deceleration and um we it all comes down in fact to th um, um one big institution which you find in every um, um country respectively in every um 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 let's say union or yeah union is probably a good word when it comes to the european union um and 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 we're looking overlooking what's going on in the respective currency which is um um used as a as a um, um vehicle to pay your bills or exchange um, 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 goods in this case and to, to pay for the goods, then um, you have three big institutions overseeing um, here the overall economic cycle, not just the monetary uh, monetary wise, but also the economic cycle in general. And um, in the US, it's the Federal Reserve, it's the FED in uh, the EU, European Union, it's the ECB, it's the European Central Bank. In China, for example, it's the People's Bank of China. In Japan, we have the Bank of Japan. In Canada, the Bank of Canada, and so on and so forth. And the main task of any of these central banks is to find ways to achieve the following three targets. So price stability first. So we, we want to make sure that there's a stable inflation. That's why everyone right now, put it bluntly, is going crazy because then inflation is, is running really, really hot. Interestingly enough, um, and, and something to remember, if you listen to, let's say, um, uh, Miss Lagarde, um, 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 who is the, the president of the European Central Bank. And um, recently she said in an interview that she didn't see that coming, that inflation would run hot and, and, and would explode on the upside that way. Um, it's, let's say this is something which makes you wonder um, if probably she's, or the, the question is, is she the right one for this job if she didn't see that coming? Because it was an easy one. That was something everyone could foresee uh, following the COVID pandemic and the uh, lockdowns and then reacting to the potential economic downturn um, the way central banks around the globe reacted by printing more money, flooding markets with liquidity, while there's... Um, there, there, there's, there's an interruption um, in the overall um, um, uh, supply chain, supply chain issues arising due to the lockdowns, probably put in that way. So you're producing less goods and you're printing more money, which is chasing these goods, which are not as much as many there's not as many goods as there used to be before the lockdowns happened and if you have a globalized world and everything is interconnected with each other well it should be clear um, that rather sooner or later you you will see these supply chain issues which we currently face so if you then start with printing more money well the reaction and this is 101 um, economics and in this case so everyone will learn this if if you if you go to a university I, I don't even think you need to go to work university probably it's it's just enough to to uh, to use common sense in this case well inflation will pick up because um, if you have fewer goods and you have more money chasing this well, then prices naturally will go up. So inflation is the natural result out of this. Um, and it shouldn't surprise you. If it does, well, you're probably not the right one for the position um, in which you're then, especially if you're the head of such a central bank. But coming back to uh, the targets you, do you plan to achieve or you do try to achieve is price stability, first of all. So you could have seen that coming if the target was to let inflation um, um, run or get out of control, well, then it's a mission accomplished. If you plan to keep it stable, then I wonder why the um, central banks around the globe, around the corona pandemic, 
um, acted the way they did, because what we've got to see was naturally what you expect to see. Um, then they're also looking for low unemployment rate. This is a very, very interesting point, especially right now, because in the morning I was talking to clients um, um, where, where um, I said, well, I have the feeling that now short term, um, short term means over minimum the next 12 months, probably even longer than that. Um, employment numbers will become especially interesting um, again. So there was a time when um, non-farm payrolls didn't, well, weren't that interesting. Non-farm payrolls in the US, US employment situation, they, well, they, they, they triggered some kind of volatility that was especially true following the um, uh, great financial um, crisis, 2008. And then there was the, a window when um, the Fed to some extent, um, connected the employment situation with um, her plan to reduce um, the quantitative easing program they were running um, following the great financial crisis. So they said, I'm not really sure about the numbers because it's nearly 10 years ago, but I, I, there was some kind of 6.5% or so unemployment rate saying, okay, if we achieve that, then we start to um, scale down our uh, quantitative easing. So roughly speaking. And then they, they realized that it's to some extent too early and that the market was um, reacting in a negative way to, to the outlook that there might be um, um, a reduction of the liquidity provided from the Fed back then. Um, and the situation now is getting very interesting again because we see inflation running hard. And given what we've seen over the last some extent 12 months with the market peaking and then this bear market um, in which we entered when looking at the spider uh, respectively the s p 500 the spider is the um, um, etf on the s p 500 or the q's which is the etf on the nasdaq 100 for example you will see that there's a clear bear trend um or, or this this is a bear market in which we find ourselves and it was mainly due to the fact that um, the fats um saw a very or initiated a very aggressive hiking cycle in terms of making money more expensive um, to fight inflation. So which got out of control following the COVID pandemic um, and the reaction to that with falling markets with liquidity while interrupting the, the supply chains. So that being said, now um, is um, resulting in um, cheap liquidity getting more expensive again. And um, so now you can see that it starts to affect um, the economy, especially when looking at the recent um, um, earnings releases we, we were facing. When looking at the big tech companies like Amazon, like um, Facebook, for example, slash Meta in this case. So they were all talking about layoffs. And it's not just these, um, the big tech companies, but it's also, for example, Hewlett Packard, who just um, recently, I think last Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, they um, am also planning to uh, lay off 10% um, of their of their workers. Um, and it's not just that the big tech companies um, will do that, but it's also that the the, the companies which, which are working for these big tech companies delivering um, whatever input to some extent, which these big tech companies are looking for, and then hiring freelancers, for example, or, or smaller companies to provide this kind of, of um, um, service to them, um, they're laying off people. And now the thing is, if you are looking at a low unemployment rate, and we are currently at a very low level, right? So we have an unemployment rate in the US, for example, from um, at around 3.7%, um, which is very low um, 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 historical wise. If you now see these layoffs, um, they will rather sooner or later show up in the employment situation, respectively, in, in terms of um, a higher unemployment rate. If an unemployment rate picks up and you've already seen a quite aggressive and restrictive monetary policy path the Fed was following, um, well, chances start to increase that they will rather sooner la uh, than later um, take a step back and say, well, we have to provide more liquidity to not see a complete um, 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 collapse in this case of our um, economy and an explosion and unemployment rate, especially true. Well, then we could also draw a bigger picture and say, well, if you have people who are unemployed and you have an unstable uh, political situation, and I 
at, at least as far as I can um, see it here from from Germany, um, and and given what I what I can read in their media, respectively, um, 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 the, the 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 accounts you can follow, let's say on Twitter, for example, and get an overview. Well, you have potential um, for social unrest to some extent if people are unemployed and have nothing to lose anymore. Well, and this is exactly then where the Fed will step in and say, well, we have to make sure that um, we deliver enough liquidity for um, um, the overall economy to keep the situation stable, not just from a monetary um, um, or from, a, from an inflation perspective, but also from an employment perspective. And um, this all in all will result in, and this is the third bullet point then, solid economic growth. Um, and so now, as, as I already pointed out, as you can see, and as everyone will know, is that the economy of each country moves in cycles. So you have up phases, you have down um, trends or down phases, um, and it's, um, it's a cycle. And this means that sometimes um, the economy is doing well, sometimes not doing well, and, and everything shrinks. So it, it, the current environment in which we find ourselves right now in is uh, nothing special. It's like well, this is something which everyone could have seen coming, let's say. It was only a question of when will it come and what will be the trigger. But it's not that there is um, um, economic um, um, expansion all the time, let's say. This is also true, then coming back from the US, for example, to um, uh, to, to, to Europe, for example. Um, so in fact, everything was fine and, and the Euro also performed quite stable, let's say, um, for nearly a decade right now against the US dollar. I mean, there was fluctuation within it, um, but all in all was quite stable. And then you saw um, um, the sell-off happening from, I think we already started at the beginning of 2021, the beginning of some January or so, um, against 120, and then we dropped below parity. Um, right now, we are trading back above that level. But um, the main reason for that is because um, the backbone of the euro is Germany. So um, you can say whatever you, you, you wish and want, and, and also politicians can say whatever they want. But all in all, uh, the euro is Germany. And respectively, the German um, um, economy in this case, and how well the German economy is doing. If the German economy is doing well, well, then everything's fine and the euro will present itself stable. There's chances of an uptrend. Um, while if the German economy is not doing well, then you probably see a downturn and you see the need for more liquidity being provided, especially to the southern periphery states or through the ECB, for example, to um, um, make sure that this whole concept continues to work, let's say. And we don't want to get too um, 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 detailed right now, but given what we've currently seen in, in Germany, for example, it makes perfect sense that the euro is under pressure. Um, I mean, right now we are probably at the end of this um, downtrend and most likely we'll see a fluctuation between 95 on the downside and 105 on the upside. And I think we'll trade within this range for quite some time. But um, in general, it wasn't a big surprise when we saw um, 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 the economic downturn in Germany being triggered by the explosion, especially in, in energy prices, um, which um, um, hit the German economy economy extraordinarily well. Um, and, and we will, by the way, have a look at the, um, um, let's call it business moral in this case, and consumer confidence to some extent in a few minutes. But um, first of all, we have to understand um, that in this current environment in which we find ourselves in, um, the central bank, they play a crucial role, and they they, they they have to act to some extent. Um, let's put it. Let's put it that way. And I wanna. I wanna continue now with this graphic to show how everything is interconnected with each other, and um, how it all in all triggers down and why GDP especially, the growth rate is of, of such high importance. So the growth rate, GDP here is at the top of everything. So this is like a number which um, gives us some um, 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 insights. Let's come back here to this one. So this is the next slide. I go back in a few seconds. So gross domestic product is um, 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 a number which is um, here calculated um, by the value of production for any country during a specific period of time. So, and what you, what you can see here is that it's affected by lots of um, um, different 
aspects, especially here, those at the, the bottom of this graphic, not necessarily these. I mean, inflation rate plays some, um, um, to some extent an important role here, but we want to focus here, first of all, at, at the bottom of this, of this graphic. And what you can see is um, you have, for example, the consumer confidence. Some of you probably recall, we, we, we made this a topic in, in recent webinars here within this Trading Spotlight webinar series, um, consumer confidence, respectively, factory production. And we made things very simple, but um, it makes clear sense right from the start. If you look at factory production, if you have a company um, which is producing whatever good, um, the company needs employees. Someone needs to, to, to work um, to, to make these um, products they are selling. What does it mean? Well, it means they have to hire more people. Um, if they hire more people, and, and this is like a, um, an economy-wide um, 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 phenomenon, let's call it, well, you have a lower unemployment rate. So everything regulates itself. Um, but all in all, you can see that the central bank plays a very crucial role here because the more money is delivered to these uh, factories or these companies producing whatever good, well, the more money they have to invest respectively, they can hire pe people with. If you then realize that it's not just that the money is um, getting more expensive right now, but especially that you can produce, let's say, 90% of your goods with, let's say, only half of, of your employees you're currently um, 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 employing, well, you can, you can fire the other 50%, and, and, and re which will naturally result in a leaner structure of the overall company. I mean, this is, I mean, this, this is one-on-one, right? This is, this is not very difficult to understand. Probably something we see right now happening in real time and being commented in real time on Twitter um, um, or at Twitter right now with Elon Musk, for example. But coming down here now, and not just the factory um, production, but also certainly it's you. It's not just that you produce the goods, um, um, but you also need a consumer who is buying the goods. Um, and therefore, you need an overall stable environment in which you find yourself in, which means um, if you have an unstable um, um, political situation, for example, or you don't know what the future will bring, like you don't know wh whether you will have a job tomorrow, let's say. Um, and because the company which which hired you will potentially fire you, like so you, you you're not really sure whether you can feed your family. So you will um, um, start to save money in this case. You won't consume, um, or vice versa. If you look very um, um, positive into the future, everything's great. Political situation is very stable, um, and you have money because you just um, um, got a raise. Because um, money is is not just cheap, but your work is also um, valued, and there's a new production and there's new innovation taking place, well, this is certainly um, resulting in a, in, a, in a rise of your confidence, which will then result in you consuming more and a higher consumption rate, um, which all in all will drive the production higher, which will result naturally in stronger economic growth, which will mean growth rate GDP will increase or decrease if you if you put a, a negative um, force sign at this um, um, whole thing. So having that in mind now, um, let's just come to the current um, situation in which we find ourselves. Let me just, oh, by the way, this is not the right one. Let me just um, um, here start out with a great website. I highly recommend um, um, you checking out. It's tradingeconomics.com. Everything you find here is for free. Um, probably probably there's a plus, um, but everything you get, what we need for our um, 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 trading investment decision and so on and so forth is, is for free here. And um, I didn't change everything. I just opened it um, and that was what I read. So it's Germany consumer moral stabilizes. So you can see here that there's uh, several ways to, to um, measure this. Um, cons or consumer moral, respectively, consumption rates, um, consumer optimism, economic optimism, whatever. In Germany, we have the um, IFO, for example, IFO. We have the GFK, which, is, um, which was released in the morning, for example. And you can see Germany consumer moral stabilizes. It's dropped massively. It's not just massively. You will see that we really saw a complete collapse. If you click here at this number, you will see that numbers really got smashed over the last 12 months. It was already negative when we started the year. And then there was um, the developments around Ukraine, invasion um, of the Ukraine from Russia. Um, then we saw the developments in the energy sector, everything 
And you can also see it or feel it. It's not just, you don't really need a number for that. Um, you, you just need to, to talk to someone um, on the streets, at the bakery, or in a kindergarten, or at school, or at work. Whoever you talk to, everyone is talking energy prices. Everyone is talking about inflation. Everyone's talking about rising rents. Everyone is talking about, I don't know whether I will still have a job tomorrow because my, my, my company um, can't pay their energy bills anymore. You have a very, very, very negative overall moral when it comes to um, 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 the, the overall situation. It's just as the economic um, um, situation, but the overall um, um, situation. And you see a really sharp drop here. And um, so it, to some extent, I have to say, and by the way, let's go back here and max this out. So you can look back at 1999, I think they started tracking this. I'm not really sure. Um, but as you can see, nearly 20 years. And we've never seen such a negative business moral um, here or consumer climate in this case um, before, which will naturally mean, well, this is usually something coming back here to our chart, which will over um, um, several instances affect the outlook for the growth rate, GDP growth rate in this case. Um, so coming back here to this, to this chart now, um, if, you, if you have such a negative consumer climate, well, what you certainly expect is um, GDP outlook or GDP growth in this case, first of all. So um, um, the overall economic production to drop. Um, still, and this is very interesting, as I already pointed out, everyone is seeing that right now. Everyone is feeling that right now. Um, to some extent, I have the feeling that um, Germans are negative by nature, let's say. So like um, we, we really um, see um, um, the darkest in, in ahead of us. There's never um, um, some kind of a light at the end of the tunnel or something like that. So this is like where it's dark and it's even getting darker. Um, so we, we're to some extent special. Um, I have the feeling that in the US, there's a similar development right now taking place um, that they are quite, yeah, let's say they, 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 are, they are seeing the recession. Probably they find themselves already within a recession, even though, especially when looking, for example, at the um, um, employment situation, you will see that, that this is not really pessimistic. It's still like you see there is some kind of positive impact from uh, the employment side to some extent. And this is very interesting, especially now with inflation peaking, um, that, that they don't really consider themselves to be in a recession. Um, so that's, that's kind, of, kind of interesting. But coming back to Germany and the overall situation we find ourselves in. So you have a negative consumer climate. Now you see a small tick up here. Um, so it's like, okay, we, we've been more negative around two months ago, and now st things start to, to brighten up. So now we are at only minus 40.2 uh, points. So still very negative, but at least not as negative as two months before. Um, the reason now I, I point this out is because that was a very, let's say, strange development taking place because there was lots of negativity which was priced in. And now people realize, hey, probably that was a little too much. And there were, um, we, we were going a little too extreme here, especially when it came to um, a projecting um, um, the, the, the future, respectively, the, 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 the economic um, 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 indications into the future here and over the year of 2023, which is like, well, yes, but energy prices won't stay as high as they're currently um, 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 trading or what we can see in the futures market. And, and we use these numbers still, these very elevated numbers and projected the economic growth into the future and saw a very dark picture when it came to economic growth. The interesting thing now is that we realized it was probably too negative. And that's why we have some kind of, let's call it, bounce potential in this case, which is very interesting. We have to remember. Now you want wonder, is it really interesting for us as investors, respectively traders? I think so it is. And I will show you why this is. Um, but first of all, we need to make sure that we are all on the same page and that we all understand um, um, what I'm talking about here. So now the interesting thing is, and this is also something which is um, great here being offered from trading economics, what they do is um, they certainly also offer the GDP growth rate. So you have here um, the summary, and it's Germany GDP um, um, we are looking at here right now. And um, so what's interesting, by the way, is um, you will see two numbers being released. The first one, you will see 
being released is um, at the end of the quarter, or let's say the end of the quarter, so September. One month after that, you have a flash estimate. And then one month later, you have a final print. So sometimes um, the numbers which are released here at the flash estimate are not as accurate as the final ones once you have all data available. Usually they don't differ that much, but still something to keep in mind uh, once you once you see um, and have ever wondered why you see in the economics calendar, you'll find um, at admiralmarkets.com, for example, in their Forex calendar, why um, there's sometimes a flash and why there's sometimes a final. So um, the reason is because the flash is the first estimate and then you have the final version um, once they have all data, in fact, from the whatever, Bloomberg, Reuters, whoever, um, and then they, they release the final data. And um, so, but what's more interesting for us is not what we've seen now for the last quarter, but what is forecasted into the future. And the great thing here about trading economics is they use their models and their um, um, numbers and project the economic growth also in the future. And this is the um, so-called trading economics um, um, forecast, the TE forecast in this case. And as you can see here, so this is the channel um, and I'm not really sure whether you can see that, but but there's a thin line here, a thin gray line, which is pointing, this is like a slope on the downside, so like going this way. Um, and it shows that we are currently projecting negative GDP growth for the upcoming quarter, respectively the upcoming quarters. So it's not just next quarter, but also um, um, beyond that. And um, that here, the German economy is expected to shrink. So to present itself potentially in a recession, if you have two um, 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 quarters with negative, consecutive quarters with negative GDP growth, you say that um, um, the underlying economy um, here finds itself in a recession. And you see this downslope here. Um, where, where does this come from? Well, most likely it comes from the negative consumer climate. I mean, everything else in addition, certainly, but it, as you can see it here, um, everything everything um, um, lines up to some extent. You have factory production scales down. People are losing their jobs. Why? Because factories say, well, it's too um, um, cost intensive to produce whatever good. So in Germany, we are talking about, um, 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 first of all, focusing on in the industry in this case. So industrial production, which is a key part, probably the backbone of the German um, um, economy in general. Um, we have a drop in consumer confidence, resulting of people losing their jobs, but also reading the newspapers and, and saying, well, I still have my job, but I'm not really sure how long I will have my job, so I save money. So consumer confidence drops. You can see that here within these numbers. They are dropping massively and accelerating on the downside and not really recovering. So there's no kind of optimism right now showing. And, and again, <laughs> with, the, with the World Cup right now, and the, uh, uh, the loss to Japan. Well, it's not even soccer which can <laughs> turn the sinking ship around. <laughs> okay, that was a bad joke. But I'm um, coming back here. So consumer confidence. Um, so you have certainly a drop in the consumption rate, higher unemployment rate. We probably, we, certainly we could take income here um, into this um, equation too. We take off or take out a trade balance. And all this is naturally resulting in a negative growth rate. For the for the upcoming quarters, so this is what what to be expected. Beside of that, you see inflation picking up, or respectively exploding on the upside. Let's have a look here at another number. I'm, I don't have the the German numbers here. I'm sorry, um, but I have now the euro area inflation. We could certainly also take a look here at at Germany, for example, and and have a look here at the inflation rate. It's very similar. You see also here an explosion on the upside. Um, and by the way, this is the highest inflation going back till the 1950s. So that was around um, the end of World War II, okay? So you see an explosion here, as you've seen back then, but also in the past, in the 1980s, for example, were here um, when uh, um, uh, the Berlin Wall fell, you saw an explosion in inflation and then certainly a drop. So inflation resulted in deflation due to, um, I'm not really sure about the word which is used for that and um, in um, economic um, um, academia. I'm not really sure about this, but it's not that we continue to rise that way. 
or we go Weimar. Well, hopefully we don't, but um, most likely it will see a sharper drop, which can already be seen to some extent when looking, that's coming back here um, to Germany and not consumer prices, but instead we look at producer prices. Then we can already see that. So look, at, look in here. You can see that. So there was a big, big um, 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 push higher in producer prices. By the way, this is a perfect example of, let's look at the last five years, that you can perfectly see that had nothing to do um, with, with the um, Ukraine war. Probably the war in Ukraine gave a, a final catalyst on the upside, but we saw already an acceleration here in producer prices, which will certainly result in higher consumer prices rather sooner than later, because um, producers will forward um, increasing prices to the consumer at the end. But this has obviously nothing to do with the war in Ukraine. It's great for politicians because they want to make things as easy as possible and sell their um, a message to, to, um, 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 to the, the Germans in this case, who do the world, whatever. But we've got, we could already see that following um, the COVID pandemic here, that was in March 2020, and the the, the um, um, steps which were taken um, here, that these resulted already in an acceleration of producer prices due to um, supply chain um, um, issues, interruptions of the supply chain, more money being printed to cover the economic downturn, that this already started an acceleration in producer prices um, um, quite early. And then it accelerated a little more, a little more um, at the beginning of 2022, but we were already parabolic going um, um, into these events, which we saw in, in the Ukraine. But coming back to um, today's topic. So you see this, this, this acceleration of inflation here on the upside. And now you have a very toxic cocktail, let's say. So you have um, an acceleration in inflation and you want to somehow bring down inflation, which means you need to make money more expensive and how you make money more expensive. If you look at prices, well, more expensive means higher yields. Um, while you have an economic downturn. So this is a very toxic environment. So you have to hike rates to bring down inflation while you have to somehow make sure that you're not killing economic growth, which you don't have at all. So that being said, delivers a very, very difficult situation right now, um, especially in, in, in Europe. Probably in the US, the situation is slightly different. Um, and that brings us to the question, so what, what, what can we expect to happen right now? Well, the thing is, if inflation, make long things short, if inflation starts to peak out, we're not there yet. To be honest, not even close when looking at uh, here, the developments, um, not just in Germany, but also coming back to the Eurozone um, here on the upside. Next week on Wednesday, we will have a release, uh, inflation release for the Eurozone. And you see, well, there's a clear acceleration on the upside. Probably we will see some kind of peak out there, but it will take some time to peak out here. But if there are any signs that there's a peak out, and given the current environment here, when it comes to especially um, the economic growth rate um, in Germany, especially the backbone of the euro, well, the ECB will very likely immediately stop hiking rates because hiking rates into such a fragile economic environment is really toxic. And it's potentially um, um, really, to some extent, slaughtering um, the, the overall economy in general, not just Germany-wise, um, but, but, but also European-wise. So, which means right now we are, we should focus, we should really focus on um, whether there's some kind of peak out taking place and the ECB taking a step back. Why is this of importance? We can certainly also, now we are looking at the Eurozone here, we could also do the same um, now for, for the US, for example, where we've already potentially seen that peak out. And you follow it, I, I'm, I'm sure you did. Um, you, you followed the webinars in the, in the recent past. I said, this is a development we should have seen for coming, given the developments, for example, in um, the ISM, for example, and the paid prices. So next week, for example, next week on Thursday, yeah, Thursday is the 1st of December, we will see um, a release of the ISM manufacturing um, index. And uh, it's 
not the number itself, which is of interest for us, but it's the sub index, which is of interest or sub indices, let's say, and here the paid prices, um, because they've seen already a sharp drop on the downside. And they're usually, we can, we can, by the way, compare the two numbers here with each other. So United States, and then we look at the um, business confidence. And I, I did a small mistake now. I, I made a mistake. Um, okay, we won't waste any time here. Usually you shouldn't look at the consumer, uh, the business confidence, which is the ISM manufacturing, but instead we want to look at the um, uh, pay prices. And therefore we have to look at business confidence first. And then you have the sub component and there you click on the pay prices and then you compare these two charts, but they look similar, let's say. Okay, they look very similar. And what you usually see is <clears throat> that the black dotted line um, um, sees an impulse first, and then the blue line, the consumer price inflation rate in this case, in this case in the US, follows these prices. And um, as I already pointed out, you see this peak out already taking place. And um, so the Fed is already stepping back from their current um, um, rate hike cycle. So what, they, what they're um, um, right now seeing is that here, for the, for the uh, next six months till um, June, 2023, um, they don't expect the Fed to continue hike um, um, rates aggressively. They probably go for another 50 basis points now in December, very likely, in fact. So likelihood of 75%, if I'm not mistaken. And then another 25, 25, 25, 25. And at the end of next year, then they will stop most likely. And at the end of next year and to the end, September probably starting, they already see um, rates going down again. Why? Because a too expensive monetary policy path or um, to, um, 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 uh, rates which are too high are toxic for the economic growth. Right now, putting this in a bigger picture perspective again, you see also tensions rising between the US and China, for example. So if you have tensions here and you see, I mean, there's also tensions in China, no question about that. But if you want to, if you want to, um, 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 have a head start, let's say, um, if you see some kind of, 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 of um, who's winning the, 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 the economic race here or something like that, um, economic growth race following the COVID pandemic, however you call that, it doesn't matter. Um, but then you probably want to make sure that mon money in uh, your respective country is cheap because this um, um, accelerates economic growth. So that being said, means um, nothing more than I expect, in fact, the, the Fed to come out loser with a monetary policy approach, as this is already projected, which is, by the way, then bringing us to which investments decision to take. Um, I could really well imagine that, and now we're coming to a chart, and we have, we're coming here to EURUSD in a few seconds. But first of all, let's have a look here at the, uh, where do you have it here? The S&P 500. Um, I, I think that we are likely to see a break back, back above the SMA 200 here and that we've um, um, seen the, the yearly lows here in, in October. That was um, the last, um, no, that was the inflation print for September in October, which was released here with this aggressive flush out. And then we started from there. I could really well imagine that that was um, um, the bottom and that we are now anticipating a more dovish stance from the um, 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 US Central Bank here that this will see a bullish breakout and we continue to rise from there. Um, so this is my, my, my rough overview here. So this has nothing to do with the, the short-term picture I'm drawing. Um, first of all, it's certainly crucial to make it back above the SMA 200, but if we make it back and if we start to see a dovish um, um, anticipation of the fat in the upcoming 12 months, I think we are, I wouldn't really say off the races, but we have a high chance to push higher and see a first target um, um, being reached here around 4,300, potentially in the first six months, well, probably even um, um, sooner than that, probably in the first three months of the, of the new year. But let's see. What's probably more interesting, especially when looking at the euro, what can we expect here after this sharper run on the upside, um, recent sharper run? I think that had nothing to do with euro strength. So, I mean, if you carefully listen to what I said about the euro and Germany especially, and looking at the business moral or consumer moral in this case, well, um, you certainly read between the lines. I'm very skeptical of the euro, and I still am. Um, we've seen now a sharp break out of this of this downtrend here. So this this pink downtrend. Um, but we are failing to capture 
the SMA 200. So this is the um, um, blue trend, uh, not trend line, but a moving average you can see here. Uh, we have trouble here. And um, right now we're topping out around this area. And now you might wonder, well, if I think that the Fed is likely to step back from her monetary policy approach being more restrictive, why shouldn't this, um, or why should this be bullish for the US dollar? I'm not really sure if it is, but um, as I already pointed out, what's more of interest right now is what will the ECB deliver? And I think the ECB has no other choice than rather sooner than later, really um, 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 hit the brakes, let's say, and don't hike rates any further. We could now make another hour and discuss about a Euro, uh, European uh, southern periphery uh, states like Italy and the developments there in, in the yield market. But Coming back here to, to the um, ECB, I think the first signs, first signs of, of a topping out uh, in inflation here will uh, let the ECB say, well, okay, that's it. We are not hiking rates anymore. And they already made a statement into this, um, uh, in this direction um, at the last meeting when they said, well, um, we decide this from meeting to meeting right now. So there's potential for, for surprises, um, in fact. In fact. Um, and so that means that I could really think well think that that we are about to top out here against um, um 105 in this case and now see a drop lower which is by the way also short term interesting to trade um so i could i could well imagine we are now we dropped already 03 um 0380 here so this area so if we um if we drop 03 80, 04, and hope below, I could really well imagine that in the next week, um, we are seeing at least a drop back to 02. So here the lows from, from earlier this week, earlier this week, and um, below that drop even further and, and see a test at least of 101 on the downside. So here and this trend line, and then let's see. So as I already pointed out, we saw a very strong trend over the last month this year but also earlier um we started out somewhere from here so that was um 2021 so yeah here around um that was january um 2021 a strong um, acceleration i could really well Im Im imagine now uh things to slow down but the euro not really recapturing the sma 200 but instead bouncing here um in a wider range between um 95 and 105, um, the upcoming, let's say, minimum 12 months, depending on how things develop, especially in Germany, um, um, economy-wise, but also in terms of um, um, the political situation. So everything, um, let's say, Eurosceptical, similar to what we're currently facing in Italy, for example, if this spills over to other European member states, um, and I'm not, I, I really, right now, I'm not really seeing this um, um, effect here in German politics, but could to some extent imagine that things accelerate quite quickly um, if things start to 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 really darken and and start things start to worsen and it's not just that we lost against Japan but we'll also lose against and not Spain but Costa Rica no that was just a joke um, but coming back now um, um, to to this whole picture um, all in all Euro USD I expect it to trade between 95 to 105 given the current developments we can see, and then we come back to this topic of today's webinar, uh, the growth rate, GDP in this case, and how um, um, this is in fact directly affected by um, um, small components, which are not of high interest, but, but you see that they play a certain role, especially over a longer period of time um, in terms of the consumption rate and consumer confidence. And um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. I hope you, you learned something. You can take something out of this, this webinar. Um, if you now watch um, the, the recording on YouTube, please um, um, leave a thumb up here. Thumb up here if you like what you saw. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also, please feel free to ask your questions um, below the video in the uh, comment section. So I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. And um, talking to you, in fact, next week. And why is this of importance? Well, we have the non-farm payroll. So then we have something on the employment situation. And as I already said, I could really well remember due to the layoffs taking place in the big tech world right now in the US, that this is a number which is getting more and more attention again. And next week could be, in fact, the um, um, starting point. And um, that's it for my end. So all the best. Happy trading. Watch your stops. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. Talk to you again next week. I really look forward to it. See you. Bye-bye.